Welcome back, everyone. I'm Specter P, and this is the fifth video in Specter AI's Quantum Security series. In this video, we're going to dive into the most powerful quantum attack ever discovered, Shor's algorithm. This is the algorithm that breaks RSA, breaks Diffie-Hellman, breaks elliptic curve cryptography, and undermines the mathematical foundation of most secure systems in use today. To understand why Shor is so dangerous, we're going to walk through every step of what it actually does. We'll take a real password, something like XIB75% $IBG4, and follow exactly how a system encrypts it, how RSA protects it, and how Shor's algorithm mathematically tears that protection apart by factoring the modulus that holds everything together. We'll start by converting the password into its numerical form, just like real cryptographic systems do. Then we'll walk through the RSA encryption process, create a realistic but teaching-friendly modulus, and watch how Shor's algorithm finds the hidden period in modular arithmetic, the key step that exposes the factors and breaks the encryption completely. By the end of this video, you'll understand not only how Shor works, but why it destroys classical encryption, what this means for cybersecurity today, and why the entire industry is racing toward post-quantum cryptography. Let's begin. Before we explore Shor's algorithm, we need to understand how a real system protects something as simple as a password. Let's take a sample password. XLB75% $I BG4. Computers don't store these characters directly. They convert every letter, digit, and symbol into ASCII codes, then into hexadecimal, and finally into a single large integer. That integer is what gets encrypted. In an RSA-based system, the encryption step uses the public key, which consists of a number E and a large composite number N. The system takes the integer form of the password raises it to the power E, and reduces the result modulo N. That output is the ciphertext, the scrambled, protected version of the password. As long as an attacker cannot factor N, they cannot recover the private key, and the encryption remains secure. This is exactly where Shor's algorithm becomes dangerous. Shor doesn't attack the password directly. It attacks N. Once N is factored, the private key falls out immediately. With that private key, the attacker can decrypt the ciphertext, reverse the process, and recover the original password in plain text. In the rest of this video, we'll walk through this process step by step. Converting the password to a number, encrypting it with RSA, running Shor's algorithm on a realistic example, extracting the factors, and finally, decrypting the ciphertext to reveal the original password. This is how quantum computers break classical encryption. Now, let's walk through what actually happens to your password before it ever touches RSA. The conversion sequence starts at 1, goes to 2, and then 3. Just as depicted below, we'll continue using the same example password seen below. Step 1 is ASCII conversion. Every character, letters, digits, and symbols gets mapped to a numerical code. Lowercase x becomes 120. Uppercase i becomes 73. Lowercase b becomes 98. And the rest of the password converts into its own sequence of ASCII values. Step 2 is hexadecimal conversion. The ASCII codes are packed into bytes and written in hex, forming the exact sequence the computer uses internally. In our example, the hex bytes are visible below. Step 3 is integer conversion. All of those hex bytes are concatenated into one large number, the message integer that RSA will actually encrypt. For this password, that integer is the 27-digit number appearing below. This is the key point. RSA doesn't encrypt text. It encrypts integers. Your password becomes a number, and that number is what enters the RSA encryption pipeline. In the next step, 
will encrypt this integer using a simplified RSA modulus, and then we'll run Shor's algorithm to break it. The exact same sequence a quantum attacker would follow. Now that we've converted the password into a single large integer, the next step is RSA encryption. RSA doesn't work on characters or strings, it only works on numbers. Your password, once converted, becomes the message integer we feed into the encryption function. To keep the math clear for this demonstration, we're using a simplified RSA public key. The exponent E is 7, and the modulus N is 143. In real systems, N is hundreds or thousands of digits long, but the structure of the math is identical. The encryption step is straightforward. Raise the message integer to the power E and reduce it modulo N. When we calculate that for our example, the ciphertext that comes out is 8, this might look simple, but in classical cryptography, the security of RSA relies entirely on one assumption, that an attacker cannot factor N. In the next slide, we'll peel back the curtain and show exactly how this calculation works, and then we'll use Shor's algorithm to break this RSA encryption wide open. Now this slide looks dense, don't panic. That's intentional. I wanted to show those interested the full calculation, but that is not required to understand the concept. I'm going to walk you through the only part you need to understand. Any questions? Let me know in the comments. RSA encryption always reduces the message first. Our password became a large integer M, and when we compute M mod 143, the remainder is 83. If you understand that single step, M mod 143 equals 83. Then you already understand the essential idea behind RSA's modular arithmetic. Everything else on this slide is optional. It shows the full repeated squaring calculation used to compute 83 to the seventh power modulo 143. We square 83, reduce it modulo 143. Square again. Multiply the pieces together and keep reducing the remainders. If you follow all the steps, you'll see that 83 to the seventh power modulo, 143 equals 8. That number, 8, is the ciphertext. I'll explain its meaning in the next slide. Please know that you don't need to memorize any of this. The important takeaway is simple. RSA encryption turns a large message integer into a much smaller remainder, and that remainder is the ciphertext. In the next slide, we're going to apply Shor's algorithm to factor N and make this entire process collapse. This is another busy slide, but don't worry. I'm going to walk you through the only ideas you need to understand. Again, I made it intentionally detailed for those who want to follow the math, but that is not required to understand the concept. Step 1. Our ciphertext is 8. That is the encrypted version of the password. On its own, it's completely meaningless. Step 2. RSA decryption uses the formula M equals C to the power of D mod N, but to compute D, the private key, we need to factor N. Step 3. N is 143. When we factor it, we get 11 times 13. That single step is what breaks RSA. Step 4. Once we have the factors, we compute phi of N, the Toshi end. Phi of 143 is 120. Step 5. The private key D is the inverse of E, mod phi of N. Since E is 7, we solve the equation D times 7 mod 120 equals 1. The value that satisfies this is 103. That gives us the private key. Step 6. Now we decrypt. We calculate 8 to the power of 103, mod 143, and the result is the original message integer, the giant number we saw a couple of slides ago. Step 7. Convert that number back to hex, back to ASCII, and you recover the original password. The important takeaway is simple. Once you factor N, RSA collapses, 
because the private key becomes easy to compute. Shor's algorithm does this factoring step in polynomial time, not linear time like a classical computer. Now you're starting to see the power of quantum security. Let's take a moment to recap the key takeaways from this lesson on Shor's algorithm. First, your password becomes a number. RSA doesn't encrypt characters, it encrypts integers. Second, RSA encryption is simply modular exponentiation. The ciphertext C equals M to the power of E reduced mod N. Third, ciphertext is useless without the private key. The number 8 alone tells an attacker nothing. Fourth, RSA breaks the moment you factor N. Once you know the primes P and Q, you can compute phi of N and recover the private exponent D. That is exactly what Shor's algorithm does. Fifth, in this video we used small RSA numbers so we could show every step on screen. Real RSA uses numbers hundreds of digits long, too large for classical computers to factor. But the mathematics you saw today is identical. Finally, Shor's algorithm changes the game. It allows a future fault-tolerant quantum computer to factor large RSA moduli in polynomial time, making the private key and the password easy to recover. And that is the heart of quantum security. Classical encryption schemes like RSA are no longer safe once quantum computers reach scale. Thank you for watching this lesson on Shor's algorithm in the Spectre AI quantum security series. If you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps us grow the channel and bring you more advanced content. Visit spectreai.ai for 55 real-life quantum security labs, all hands-on, all built for learning by doing. You will experience real quantum security scenarios in these AI-assisted labs and obtain the Spectre AI Quantum Cyber Warfare Professional Engineer Diploma. Check out our books on Amazon for a deeper dive into quantum security and emerging technologies. The books are available in print and ebook. They go with the labs, taking a deep dive at the root of each question and providing detailed, in-depth solutions with code and math and leave a comment below. Tell us what you want to learn next. Your questions directly shape the videos we make. Thanks again for being here, and we'll see you in the next video.